Cuphead is a triumph. After multiple delays, the long-anticipated title from Studio MDHR was released to near-unanimous praise not only from critics, but from the gaming community in general, and I think just about anyone who's passionate about games can look at Cuphead's success and the manner in which it's been embraced as a really good sign that there's absolutely an audience for something new and different, that there's the possibility of a reward for a dev willing to take risks and well for Cuphead. The risk of making a 2D side-scroller boss rush game with a unique 1930s cartoon aesthetic has paid off to the tune of over 1 million copies sold. Cuphead is a success. It's a beautiful game. It's a fun game. And yes, it's a hard game. It tests you, it might frustrate you, and for some, it may even keep you from seeing the end. And this has caused a debate about difficulty in games in general. Should devs consider those of a lesser skill level? Are gamers who purchase a game entitled to all of its content regardless of whether or not they can pass a given challenge and succeed? Some will say they are entitled to the whole experience. That's why Cuphead shouldn't be as hard as it is. Or it should have an easy mode so people can see everything as the simple mode featured in Cuphead won't allow you to reach the end of the game. You have to play on regular. You should be able to skip bosses. Why not? Why can't we play it the way we want to? We bought it. And some are even calling those defending the game's difficulty elitists. People who want to feel like they're in some exclusive club. And I'm here today to challenge that. Not only do I think Cuphead's difficulty is okay, not only do I think studios have the right to design their games this way, but I'll even go so far as to say Cuphead's difficulty is 100% necessary for its success, and I'd like to start with this. The difficulty isn't there to barricade you and stop you from experiencing it. Cuphead's difficulty is the experience. It's crucial and interwoven into the very design of the title. It's a pillar that holds up the entire game, and without its intentional difficulty, Cuphead isn't Cuphead anymore. Its art style, the gameplay, its challenge, that's what makes it the game you see on your screen right now. That's what makes it the game everybody's talking about, and that's what sold a million copies. If you want to see Cuphead, you can watch it. If you want to play Cuphead, then you go into it understanding that challenge is a core principle, and you are not entitled to beating it just because you bought it. And the counter-argument to this I find a bit strange. They cite other forms of media like film, books, and music. They make the comparison that none of those forms of art ever require you to accomplish some task before experiencing all of it. Nothing is there to impede your progress, and that's true. But there's something that video games have that those other forms of media don't have, and that's the ability to interact. In music, film, television, we are an audience. But in games, we are responsible. In games, we are not passive bystanders, we are participants. And it's that very interaction and concept of participation that allows video games to be what I would consider the most powerful medium in the world. When it comes to artistic expression, I truly believe that games have the greatest potential of any other form of media out there. You can make cinematic story-driven experiences where difficulty isn't important. You can live a completely separate life in open world RPGs with thousands of choices that you make that actually change things. The method for telling stories are there, and they are numerous, but to view games in that lens and ignoring the aspect of interaction is a grave mistake to those who love this hobby. Look at competitive shooters. This medium has such a vast array of experiences that it can create not only story-driven titles, but ones that allow you to compete. Games that are treated as borderline sports. Games that require you to outplay other people. You're not entitled to anything. You buy the game because you want to challenge yourself and compete with other players to satisfy your competitive nature. So now I ask you, why can't Cuphead just be what it is? Cuphead wants to challenge you. Cuphead wants to beat you. The devs consider it integral, and if you spend money on it, you must realize that because this is an interactive medium, it will require something from you. You know, I see people compare games to media, and that's fair, because they are. But what happens when you compare them to other forms of interaction? Let's take music. You go to a show, and you're entitled to listen to the music that is played there. But what about playing music yourself? When you buy a guitar, are you entitled to being good at it? If you spend your hard-earned cash on an instrument, should you instantly be able to experience all that the instrument can accomplish? No way. You have to practice. You have to learn and persevere. And if you do, then you might just be able to play the guitar someday, and that will be an extremely worthwhile experience. What if you go out and buy a dirt bike tomorrow and all the gear you could ever need? Spend your hard-earned cash. Are you entitled to being good at it? Does that mean you can go out and pass every obstacle on a racetrack? No. You'll have to practice and learn it and get better. And if you do, that'll probably make you feel really good. If you give up, 
well then the experience just wasn't for you. In neither case are you going to be able to bypass the effort required to reach competency because both of these examples require an individual's input. So now back to Cuphead, a game that requires an individual's input and interaction. Why is that so hard for some people to accept? Purchasing Cuphead gives you the opportunity to conquer it. You'll have to learn its systems, practice it, get better, and for those who feel captivated by that desire to beat it, they will push on and do just that. And if that's not the type of game you want, a game that will challenge you, that might stop you, that you might not be able to complete, then you very simply don't want Cuphead. But please consider that the very reason you don't like it might be the very same reason someone else does. That idea that maybe you won't be able to beat it, that the only possible way of seeing it through to the end is to conquer the challenge, that might be exactly why someone else buys it and loves it. And I'm begging everyone watching this video right now to hear me when I say, in a medium that allows for so many different types of experiences, we need to be okay with a game like Cuphead as well, and appreciate it for what it is, where the challenge is integral to the experience, and there's no need to compromise that. And luckily, for the most most part, I think we do, but it's important that we have a dialogue about it. That's also not the only reason Cuphead's difficulty is necessary. It's to extend the life of the game. Contrary to popular belief, Dark Souls did not invent the concept of hard video games. I find the constant comparisons to the Souls series embarrassing at this point. It's like, oh, is the game hard? It's just like Dark Souls, as if it invented the concept of challenge. No, not like Dark Souls, more like how thousands of games were prior to that, that were designed before developers started trying to hold our hands. Hand. In gaming's early days, video games clearly were not as advanced as they are now, weren't built the same way, and so developers used challenge and difficulty to extend the life of their game and keep people playing them longer. This wasn't always a good thing, but turning your game into a challenge-based experience often made a lot of sense, and for Cuphead's developer MDHR, I think they felt it made a lot of sense for them as well. Because while technology and efficiency has improved in the industry, Cuphead was created in a very old-fashioned way. It is traditionally animated with paper. Every frame of animation, every attack, every idle stance, every move was painstakingly hand-drawn to more authentically capture the look of a 1930s cartoon. And if you don't think that took a long time, you haven't been paying attention to all the delays. This was a project revealed in 2014 and just now got released. Now, the end result is gorgeous. You can tell there was tremendous effort put into it, but if I was a designer and I had just spent four or more years building this, then I'd want my players to have a reason to experience it over and over again, and I'd want them to play it for more than an hour or two, and that's exactly what you'd be looking at without the challenge. Without Cuphead's difficulty, you would beat it in less than an hour. All the bosses that spent years to animate, thousands of hours of work put into them, a successful boss run will take about one to two minutes on average. Now, if you were a designer and you were the person who spent no telling how many hours drawing each and every frame of animation for a boss, and when it's all said and done, you have about two minutes worth of content, would you want that to be something people just blow through on their first try and never touch again? Do you really think that's a smart route for the game to take? No. So I guarantee you, when the studio was designing Cuphead and they realized just how much time each encounter took to create and flesh out, which was probably pretty early on in development, they came to the conclusion that a challenging gameplay loop was a perfect fit. In fact, it was 100% essential, crucial, and necessary, because without it, you would literally see everything the game had to offer in about an hour. And you'd go, oh, look at all this pretty art and never play it again. In fact, why would you buy it at all? They have interwoven difficulty into the very experience of Cuphead in what I would consider to be a near-perfect formula. Absolutely stunning and beautiful art with incredible animation mixed with original classical music emulating a long lost style, with each stage also featuring carefully designed patterns and obstacles for players to overcome. You don't just hop in and wave to the boss, press a few buttons and move on to the next one. You master the boss, triumph over them, and that is the game. This is not an art museum, it's a challenge, and name me a challenge worth taking that you're entitled to winning. By making Cuphead difficult, you don't just extend its life, but for a lot of people, you make it worth playing to begin with. It was already receiving a lot of buzz for its visuals, but when it was finally released and the word on the street was that it was also really good and challenging and rewarding, 
then you better believe it tipped the scales from being a game many people would just have watched an hour long YouTube walkthrough for to something people wanted to experience for themselves. The YouTube videos, the Twitch streams, the strategy guides, because of its relentless difficulty, it garnered the attention and time of multiple personalities. It became something worthy of devotion and that creates a connection. And when a player feels that, they spread it. It's kept Cuphead from being just a little blip on the radar. It made it a complete package and something worth discussing from a design and gameplay standpoint standpoint, not just a visual one, and I just gotta mention this briefly. I'm not saying this is applicable across the board, but when game journalists and others complain about game difficulty, and they start pulling out all these arguments about the game creating a sense of elitism, and they feel an entitlement to an easier mode to see the whole thing, even going so far as to call difficult games ableist, which seems to completely ignore the term game to begin with, something you interact with play, try to win. When you have deadlines, and it is your job to review or discuss something and you can't complete it, perhaps that might contribute to some of the animosity that you hear, albeit rarely. A game journalist doesn't have as much time to invest on a game when they need to have a completed review ready by its released window. And again, I'm not generalizing or even talking about specific individuals, I'm just throwing it out there as something to think about. And I think the solution is a combination of game reviewers processing difficulty a little bit differently, but also in us as gamers being a little more open-minded as well, because not every game is going to appease every person. We all like different things. We don't have to jump down every reviewer's throat just because we disagree with them. And to coincide with that argument, and just to officially take a stance on this, I am okay with there being games that I personally can't beat, or games that would require too much of my time to get good enough to finish them. Because I believe that difficulty, while not always important, can be crucially important to a game's genetic makeup and their overall identity. And I don't even mind games that genuinely require absurd levels of motor function and reflexes to play them, even if I, again, couldn't personally do it, because I want the people who like that insane challenge to have that experience available to them. Now does that mean there are no ways to alleviate some of these issues? Is there nothing you could do as a designer? No there are. Maybe you could keep the difficulty the same, but make it so you only need 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 6 bosses to move on. That way if a particular boss is giving you trouble, at least in the back of your mind, you know you can move on if you really need to, and maybe give those who do everything a special bonus or something, right? The answer doesn't have to be make a super easy version of each fight. If you use difficulty as a design pillar, then you can build systems around it. And to me, that's a much more worthwhile criticism than attacking the difficulty itself, because Cuphead's difficulty is 100% necessary. It's core to the experience. And we need to accept as a community that some games are hard and some are easy. Different titles try to do different things and different titles handle difficulty in different ways. In some, difficulty is about making the player comfortable with the experience. In others like Cuphead, it is part of the experience itself. And I understand some games are unfair poorly designed, and excruciatingly frustrating and difficult as a result of that. And I believe discussing when a game is hard because it was designed that way, or if it's difficult literally just because it's bad, or difficult just for the sake of it, that's a worthwhile topic. But when we discuss that topic, I think we should take some of these things and consider them and view difficulty not always as just a detached aspect of games, but something that is integral and can be utilized differently from experience to experience. Difficulty can frustrate people, it can make you impatient, but if we let those emotions get the best of us, and we spout off and make ridiculous arguments and get consumed by those frustrations, then I think oftentimes you'll overlook the solutions. We can't allow ourselves to dismiss experiences by pushing a notion that every game has to provide the same thing. This medium allows for so many different types of experiences, and I believe it's better the more variety there is. It's better because games like Dark Souls exist. It's better because games like Gone Home exist. It's better because of games like Mario and because of games like Portal or The Witness. It's better because of games like Doom, because of games like Nier or Uncharted or insert your favorite game here. And you know what? It's better because of games like Cuphead. Till next time.